Charles Barkley, Hall of Famer, TNT, inside the NBA analyst. Boy, who was the happiest person in Boston last night that the Celtics got to win and, well, they uh, held up your uh, vacation there, Charles. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, that was an easy game last night, though, Dan. You knew they were going to win that game. The fun starts tomorrow in Miami. That was the easiest bet I've ever made. You know they were going to ride to momentum after game four. Um, there were going to be rockers in that building. Uh, that was an easy game. Now the fun starts tomorrow when you go on the road and it's do or die. What do you expect? Well, you know, the Celtics got a better team. Uh, I mean, I think everybody can see that. If they play their best, the Miami play their best, they got a better team. But, man, they keep having this, these lapses. Um, and, imp- and like I say, the better team, if, if, if the Celtics lose this series, they still with a better team. They just have too many brain lapses. I think they're going to keep it together and win. I think we're going to go back to Boston for game seven. Yeah, um, I do too. I, I just think they're front runners. Uh, when things are going good, they're great. <laughs> but I would love to see them where they wouldn't make it all their threes and have to learn to do other things to win the game. And that's where your mental toughness c- comes in, when you have to scrap, play defense, and really, really hustle. I love to see that, but I I, I think they, they're going to play well tomorrow. Yeah, it, it's frustrating because when I see the Celtics play like they did last night, the last two games, that's the way they played during the regular season. And you see, Miami wasn't consistent during the regular season. And now, I don't know what to expect out of Boston. And I, that yeah, has to know, be frustrating for everybody involved with this team. Yeah, because, you know, they had to brain fart against the Hawks. They did the same thing against the Sixers. And the, it's not, I was watching TV, 97% of the people picked the Celtics to win. I'm like, yeah, that's a no-brainer. You know, Miami could make it interesting because they play hard. They play smart. Jimmy's terrific. But the Celtics got the best team. And you see the things you're like, well, that's why they've been consistent, inconsistent all year. Uh, but they live and die by the three. And like I say, I, I, if they're making threes, they're going to be tough to beat. But shooting a basketball is the hardest part of the game. And I love to see them not make threes and see how tough they were mentally because you saw how weak they were mentally in game, game three. Uh, when they don't, they, they came down and missed like 10 threes in a row and just really just quit. Uh, I think the, and I actually think that's really the one thing that really hurt the Miami Heat with Magic Johnson saying they quit, me saying they quit. They had to come out in game four and play good, and then they got hot. So that, that, that's probably the worst. If they had lost a really competitive game in game three. I think they would have got swept. But they played so bad in game three, they had to play for any pride. When you got on the Celtic jersey and the way they played in game four, and then I say Jason got hot in game four and it carried over to game five. Yeah, these teams can shoot themselves back into a game but also shoot themselves out of a game because everybody's so reliant on the three. Would you rather have Jason Tatum or Jimmy Butler as your teammate? Jimmy Butler, I know he's going to give it to me. He's tough. He got he got that that grit. Jason Tatum probably is a better player. But if you ask me who I want to go in the foxhole with, it's going to be Jimmy Butler. Yeah, but but there's a lot of guys who are great players. You're like, I don't want to go in the foxhole with that guy uh, from my generation. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, Jason Tatum is probably a better player. But if I'm going to go to war, I want Jimmy Butler as my sidekick. Talking to Charles Barkley inside the NBA analyst and, of course, Hall of Famer. Do you think LeBron really feels like there's – now, he said he's better than 90 to 95% of the players. So let's say he's better than 95%. So that's a little over 20 guys. Does LeBron think there are 20 guys better than him right now in the NBA? Probably not. When you're a great player like he is, your ego makes you think you're – always the best. Uh, but first of all, LeBron's not going to retire. No. I, I was disappointed he bought that up in the Nuggets 
highlight of their organization. You know, they'd never been to the finals. They just swept the big, bad Lakers. Nobody's giving them any respect. But do you think he LeBron, did it strategically, Charles? Because LeBron is yes, very yes, calculated. Yes, yes, Because yes. you know them fools on Espen were going to talk about it. On, like, <laughs> they're still talking about it. You know, it's funny. I actually, Dan, I actually turned my television off the next day because the first two blocks were all about LeBron instead of what the Denver Nuggets has accomplished. I mean, you think about it. They got a dude on their team who's arguably could have won three MVPs in a row, had just swept the big, bad Lakers, and we they spend the first two blocks talking about if LeBron going to retire. Yeah, I think he did it intentionally. He, there's no way he's retiring. I just uh, – LeBron's such a good dude, and got, he got his stuff together. I was disappointed he took the shine away from the Nuggets because what they have accomplished, you know, it's crazy, Dan. When the playoffs started, you go back. I mean, how much this thing has changed in two weeks? Two weeks is all we're really talking about. Two weeks ago is, boy, you see Steph Curry put up 50. Those Warriors got that championship DNA. They're the team <laughs> to beat in the Western Conference. You know, that's what champions do. <laughs> Then the, the the Nuggets play the Suns. Like, man, and KD, and really Booker and KD, gave it to the Clippers. They're like, man, the Nuggets going to beat, get beat by the Suns. And then next thing you know, they lose. They beat the, the, the Suns. And then the Lakers, the big bad Lakers, with LeBron and Anthony Davis beat the Warriors. Like, uh-oh. This is is this gonna be LeBron's best championship ever? <laughs> this is gonna be a great story. Why? I heard a why are you of, watching? Now, on, say this. I I heard a couple guys like, "Wow, can you believe it? This team was two and ten at the beginning of the season. They were in the play in. Now they're gonna play for the championship." And and Joker says, "Smack them four quick times." And we don't even celebrate. They, and they, Dan, they've been in first place since October. Yeah. The Lakers got hot after the trade deadline. They got all those good players after the trade deadline. The, the, the Nuggets been in first place since October. Why do you keep watching ESPN? Well, I'm on the treadmill. I got to watch something because you know I can't watch your punk ass Skip Bayless. I got to watch. I got to watch ESPN. It's the only thing that make your workouts go faster. What do you weigh? Okay, over under Charles right now. Uh what what's the uh over under, Paulie? Uh, do- oh man, he looks good. I would have said the over at 279 and a half. Okay, who's going over or under? Marv Barkley over 279 and a half. Under. Paulie just over. Ooh. Seaton. Under. Todd. Yeah, I'm under two on that. I'm going under 279 and a half, Chuck. You're wrong. Um, you know, Dan, I started at 352 uh, in January. I've been taking this drug, drug called Monjuro, and I've been working out. And I tipped the scales the other day at 290. All right. So right. I can't, you know, I was talking to my doctor. She's awesome. I can't get back to my plan weight, which is 250. So my goal is 270. Right. But I started out when I started taking this drug, Manjaro. Uh, I was too, because she didn't like Ozempic. She likes, she said, I don't like Ozempic. Try Manjaro. And like I say, I weighed the other day and I was 290. I feel great. I'm going to get to 270. I got to figure out, because at some point I got to get off the drug, but I really feel so good physically, I got to make sure I don't get fat again. Because you don't even realize how crappy you feel until you start losing weight. That's the thing that's funny. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was like, I feel so good now, but you don't even realize, like I say, you don't even realize how crappy you feel until you start losing weight. So who's I appreciate lost, the love from you guys. Who's lost more weight, you or Shaq? I don't know uh, how much he's lost. He looks like 
Uh, he looks good, but I don't think he's even close to me. Yeah, but Shaq was up to yeah. four spins, right? Where did you go, Dan? I'm right here. I think it's on your end. You're frozen. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Shaq was up to four spins, wasn't he? Oh, easily. Golly. Easily. <laughs> um, hey, I was, uh, uh, we had Tim Legler on, and I said, who's your player comp with Joker? And he said, I don't have one. He, and he said, there's no game plan for him. He said, Denver's winning no matter who they play in the finals because of Joker. Is there a player comp? for Joker that you played against? That's a great question. He's right. Whoever Denver plays, they're going to win. They'll have a much easier time with the Heat than the Celtics, though. Yeah. Um, but I think Denver, I haven't changed my pick since the playoffs started. The Denver Nuggets are going to win the world championship. He He's the best passing big man I've seen since Bill Walden and Brad Doherty. But those guys couldn't shoot threes. And I don't think either one of them were as great in the post up as Joker. Okay. I mean, he's, man, he's unbelievable. And Dan, there's no way you can't like him. You like, if you don't like him, there's something wrong with you. I mean, if you don't like the Joker, there's something wrong with you as a person. And just that, that little thing he did when he went up to Matt Ishba and gave him a hug, gave him the after ball. That, yeah. Like, that's the Joker, man. He's such a great kid. He don't and he don't have no bells and whistles. He just plays basketball. He plays smart. But you got to give their GM a lot of credit. Going out and getting some of KCP Brown, the little brown brown kid from Kansas. I mean, man, he's done a ph phenomenal job. I think his name is Calvin Booth. They are loaded, and man, I can't wait to see what happens because. You know, I'm not one of these guys. I want to see – I love guys who are on the crap list with me who are great players who haven't won a championship. I really would love to see Joker win it because he's never going to get his due until he wins the championship. That's just the way this thing works out now. Yeah. So I would love to see him win the championship because it doesn't make or break your life if you don't win the championship. I know some people want you to think that. I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty damn sure I'm doing good, Dan. Um, but does Shaq think he's getting to you when he brings up that you didn't win? I I don't think he's that dumb. <laughs> uh, you know, ask you know, him how many titles he won in Orlando before he got together yeah. with Kobe or D Wade. Yeah, I know. You know, I always <laughs> laugh. It's like I didn't realize when basketball became like tennis and golf or individual sport. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the thing is crazy. Like Joker's been the best player really probably for the last three or four years. The only difference is Jamal Murray got healthy and he's got a sidekick now. The bench clearly is better, but it's a team game. I always laugh when people say that to me. I'm like, I'm not sure what you want me to do. If you want me to get mad, <laughs> I'm not going to get mad. Yeah, I get it. I didn't win the championship, but I, it's like they's like, I, 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 I get it. Appreciate it. But uh, I always laugh when somebody says it to me. What's the oddest endorsement you've ever been offered? That's a great question. I don't I don't consider I am very selective because I want to build a partnership. I can't remember the weirdest one, to be honest with you, Dan. But I'm very strategic on the companies I involve myself with. It's something that they really have to I have to really trust them uh, and they have to help me do things in the community uh, to be honest with you, because I don't look at like, I don't want to just make money. Uh, I just think it's important that they help me in the community, especially communities of color and really poverty. Cause it, it's more people who are poor than who are black Cause white people. There are a lot of white people out there just as poor as black people. Anybody who want to level the playing field, they can work with me because uh, obviously I'm black and I want to help the black community, but also want to help poor white people also. 
Um, they need just as much help because, you know, people always talk about race, but the really big problem is economic opportunities. Before I let you go, uh, we've been playing, Marvin's been playing uh, his uh, playlist for a cookout. And I uh, didn't know if you had a, a song, like a go-to song that you want played at a cookout. Well, my two favorite groups are the Eagles and Public Enemy. I've seen the Eagles probably 45 to 50 times. Public Enemy is my favorite rap group of all time. Anytime you get Eagles or Public Enemy at a cookout, I'm golden. But you got to make sure you burn the hot dogs, Dan. That's the most important thing. It's got to be crispy hot dogs. And you can only put onions and ketchup on them. Okay. And they got to be raw onions and ketchup. Maybe sometimes I'll throw a little spicy mustard. But the most important thing is to get the hot dog, crispy, and onions. Mm. I don't think Public Enemy and the Eagles ever played. Uh, they didn't tour together, I don't think. I don't think they played. No, I, I think they, they're going for two demographics. Yes, they demographics. Are. Did you ever, were you ever uh, stricken by the uh, South Beach flu when you played? You know, that's one of the stupidest things. <laughs> it, they act like Miami's been, it, it, you know, it, you know what's really stupid? <laughs> Everybody talks about Denver. Like, you can't breathe in Denver. I'm like, Maybe my memory is a little fuzzy, but I don't remember the Denver Nuggets just stacking up championship after championship <laughs> because of the altitude. I was like, please stop. No, listen, man, in the NBA, you get to sleep all day. The game doesn't start at 730 at night. You, you got plenty of time. The, the, the heat, it's amazing. When they had Dwayne Wade, Alonzo Martin, and Shaquille, they won the championship. When they had Dwayne Wade, LeBron, and Chris Bosh, they won the championship. What exactly happened those other years when they didn't have those guys? <laughs> so you never you never had the South Beach flu. You, you never went out too late and, and it hung over Dude, the next game. Man. Yeah. Well, I had a lot more in other states and other cities. <laughs> well, okay, what, what, was, what was your go-to city where you go, this could be a long night? Well, anytime you went to L.A., New York, it's it's intoxicating. Because yeah. when you're in L.A. Literally. Literally, you got all <laughs> these stars around, you know, and it's uh, and also when you go to New York, I was always amazed when I went to New York. You'd go out, it's 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, and you're like, don't these people have jobs? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm always laughing. And it's like, Dan, it's crazy. There was a place in New York called Butter. We used to drive up on Monday night just to go there. It was every I met Pay, I met Eli there one night for the first time. Every there was probably 20 stars at the bar, but there was still like hundreds of people. And you said to yourself, Well, we're stars and we know who we are. <laughs> are these, do these people have jobs? But it always amazed me in New York when you go out. In the night of the week, like obviously when you go out on a Friday or Saturday in any city, that's going to be a lot of people. But I don't care what night you went out in New York, Philadelphia is the same way. There was a place every Sunday night, every Monday night we used to go out to. Uh, and you're like, well, we know what we got to do tomorrow. What these other people ain't got no jobs? It's crazy. You think you could have survived in New York playing for the, the, the Knicks? Oh, yeah. Because when you go there, that adrenaline and that, you know, there's a reason they call it the best arena in the world. Yeah. Man, even when you went there on a bad team, there's so much juice in the building. You get energy that you're eating. And then when you sit over there, same thing in L.A. When you see all those stars sitting over there, you want to play. I remember the first time, my first game in L.A., Jack Nicholson said hello to me. I went and called my mom and I was getting, I said, Jack Nicholson know who I am. I couldn't believe it. You know, he sit right beside the bench. He gave me a compliment. I went and told all my friends. I called my mom and grandma. Y'all not going to believe this. Jack Nicholson know who I am. 
Hey, same thing. Denzel Washington came up to me one time, Dan. You know, and I try hard not to fanboy, but I was so excited. I was like, Denzel Washington know who Chuck is. It's crazy. <laughs> they all know who you are now. Have a great summer. Hopefully you get started soon here. You know, it, we were talking about, I was talking to Ernie about it last night. Going into game four, we're like, guys, we're 15 minutes away, basically. <laughs> From vacation. Vacation. Yeah. And now, five <laughs> days later, we might have to work on the Mario Day. Uh, I think you're going to. Hey, um, thanks as always. I hope you have a great off season. We'll try not to bother you. And uh, thanks again. Hey, man, I appreciate you, Dan. And tell the guys, I say, hell, y'all have a great holiday. And thanks to all the soldiers and everybody who's ever served. Thank you. All right. That's Charles Barkley. We'll take a break. We're back after this.